Hi everybody, this is Catherine, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in 7 Days to Die. A lot of change for the past year on this game. And uh, honestly, it's running pretty great. Uh, I'm still doing this guide because I know a lot of people are playing with an integrated video card and stuff like that. Uh, when I did my guide, I did it on my uh, laptop with a 1050 mobile. So, and it was still running great, honestly. So we're going to start with Windows and after that, we're going to go inside of the game. So the first thing that I recommend is the game mode. Make sure that game mode is at on for the past eight months. Game mode on Windows 10 or 11 is really good. So I recommend to using it. Xbox game bar, I still recommend to you not using it, causing stuttering, crashes and stuff like that. And for the capture, I recommend to put off background recording and recorded audio. Another thing that I recommend is hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. You will need to search for graphic setting in your search bar. But to have this option, you will need an NVIDIA video card 1000 series or more recent. Um, it really helps with bottleneck and uh, you can expect a nice 3 to 5% boost in your FPS. If you have like an entry level uh, video card, for example, 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, 2060. It will help you, uh, so I really recommend to do that. When you do that, make sure that you restart your computer to apply it. Another thing that I recommend is make sure that you have the latest driver on your AMD or NVIDIA uh, GPU. Uh, also, if you have an integrated GPU from Intel, you can definitely go on their website, do the update. It will really help. Uh, don't just use the uh, Windows updates from Windows. Make sure that you have the latest one. Another thing that I also I can recommend is if you're still struggling with your FPS after the whole guide, uh, I really recommend image scaling. I have two dedicated video on my channel, one for AMD called Super Resolution, and the other one is for NVIDIA called NIS, NVIDIA Image Scaling. Um, so I'm just going to explain it quickly. So you just like activate it here, for example. Um, I have a 2K monitor. So the resolution of my monitor is 2K. When I go inside of seven days to die, I, I make sure that my game is in full screen. I lower the resolution of the game at 1080p and this software will upscale it back to 2K and you can expect a nice 15 to 20% boost in your FPS. And honestly, the image quality doesn't change too much. You're gonna lose a little bit of quality, but it's really not that bad. And uh, you can do that for all the resolutions. For example, you have a 4K monitor, you can upscale. 2K to 4K. You can even do 1080p to 4K and you can, you will have a nice like 30 to 35% boost in your FPS. So you can do that with AMD and NVIDIA. It's pretty much the same quality if you compare both and almost also the same boost in FPS. Also recommend to look at your energy profile on your computer. So right energy, go to power option. Make sure that you're running balance or high performance. Uh, don't use power saver. Um, on normally on a desktop computer, you will not have this issue. But if you have a laptop, uh, sometimes when you plug and plug your laptop in the wall, it stays at power saver. So you don't want that. Make sure that you're running balance or high performance. Another thing that I can re recommend is pretty much I have a dedicated guide for AMD and also uh, one for NVIDIA. It's how to overclock your GPU and also your CPU if you want. Um, you can expect some nice boost, 3 to 15%. It really depends on your thermals, your component, what kind of video card that you have and stuff like that. Uh, but it can also help you with your FPS. Now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, let's go to video. So the first one will be display. This is pretty much your resolution. If you want to use the image scaler that uh, I showed you for AMD and NVIDIA, this is pretty much where you will lower your resolution. So for an example here, 1080p and I want to keep my ratio 16 by 9. And with my software, I will just re-upscale it at 2K and I will gain FPS if I want to use the image scaler. Um, really important for the image scaler, make sure that full screen is at on. If it's not on, it will not work. Dynamic resolution, you don't want to use that. V-Sync, I'm putting this one at off. Uh, I have a free sync monitor. So if you have free sync or G-Sync monitor, you can definitely uh, just remove your V-Sync. But uh, if you don't have those technology and you don't like tiering in your image, you can activate VSync if you want. You will add input lag to your game. But, uh, you know, it's not an eSport uh, game like a Valorant or a Counter-Strike. So it's not that bad for the input lag. 
Field of view is really important. Uh, a, lo I, a lot of people is going crazy with the field of view, and um, it will you will lose a FPS if you uh, increase your field of view because you're seeing more stuff in front of you, so you need to render more. So don't go too crazy with this one if you have like an, uh, an entry level computer integrate GPU and something like that. Start with something like 63, and if you're still struggling after the whole guide. Go a little bit lower, like something like 59, but do some testing, but don't start at maximum with field of view. After that, for the quality. Uh, quality preset, I just put this one at custom. The first one will be the anti-aliasing. I put this one at off because I don't like the anti-aliasing in this game. I feel like my game is blurry, so that's why I'm not using it. And also, you can expect a nice 6% boost in your FPS. After that, you have the texture. So those three parameters here, texture, texture filter, and UMA texture quality will really depend on your uh, VRAM on your video card. So if if you have six gig and more of VRAM, you can max everything, even ultra plus here. So without any problem, if you have something like four gig, go with I and medium here. So just lower it and follow your VRAM. Uh, a couple of software like MSI Afterburner can help you with that. They will tell you like right now the game is taking uh, 2.5 gig of VRAM. So you will know how many v, uh, gig that you have left reflection quality and reflected shadow those one put those one at off um you have a couple of options here you have like uh, ultra high medium and low and you can also removing it if you're struggling with your uh, the stability of your fps this will help you a lot reflection quality and reflected shadow that's why I recommend to put those one at off. You can expect a nice like 10 to 12% boost in your FPS and also a lot more stability in your FPS. Shadow distance also, I recommend to put this one at off. You have a couple of options. If I compare ultra plus to off, you can expect another 14% boost in your FPS. So pretty cool here. Water quality, not a huge difference between low and high. So you can definitely go with high with this one. Particle, it really depends. If you're playing on an entry-level computer, you should start at 25%. Look at your setting. If everything is fine, you can go higher if you want. If you're still struggling, when you have a lot of particle in your monitor, uh, just lower it and uh, it will help you to stabilize your FPS. When you lower your particle, you will not necessarily see an increase on your FPS right away. You need to see particle uh, to, to, to see if uh, your FPS is more stable. View distance, I recommend medium. You have three settings here, as you can see. Uh, I don't like low because you don't see too further in front of you. So that's why medium is a nice balance uh, for this type of game. Uh, objects distance, this one pretty much the same thing. Then the particle start at 25%. Look at your FPS. If you're fine with it, just go a little bit higher. If you're still struggling, go lower. Carrying quality. I didn't see a big difference between like lowest, low and medium. So that's why I recommend to go with medium. Uh, you will have a, a little bit more image quality, but not a huge dip in your FPS. Uh, grass quality, this one go with low. Again, lowest and low, I didn't see a big difference. Like sometimes one FPS difference. So that's why I'm recommend to go with low. Object quality, medium. Again, low versus medium. I just saw 1% difference between the two presets. So that's why I recommend medium. And occlusion, if you have a bad CPU, go with off. But if you have like a 4-core and 8-thread, like a basic uh, CPU, like an i5 or i7 for the past like 4 even 5 years, you should be fine with occlusion at on. For the last here, uh, preset, first three for sure go with off. Ambient occlusion, I know a lot of people don't like to deactivate it because the game looks flat. So if you feel that your game looks flat when you deactivate it, put this one at off. But you still can have like a nice 7% boost just to remove your ambient occlusion. And uh, I, I mean like if you, you your game looks flat, put this one at on. But you will probably lose 6 to 7% uh, uh, in your FPS. Uh, reflection, go with off. And sun shaft, go with off. Finally, the last step is the dynamic mesh option. Dynamic mesh enable, go with no. Uh, mesh distance 100. So just copy those settings and you should be fine with your FPS. So this is pretty much a very aggressive way to have like FPS. Uh, if you have like a mid-range computer, normally you can like expect to have a lot more of FPS. So you can definitely like reactivate your reflection a little bit more like shadow distance and stuff like that. Really depend on 
what you want to do with this. Uh, I did this guide on an i7 on a laptop with a 1050 mobile. So that's why it's very aggressive. And I'm running like a nice 80 uh, FPS when I'm playing this game. So if you have any question about this guide, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.